What's up? Happy Thursday. It's going. Hopefully, everyone had some sales today. Let's give it a minute. Let everyone hop on. Catherine was first. Nice. Red Nickerson, how's it going? Scott, Donna. Thanks for joining D Mays, Michigan Girl, Linda, Benji. What's going on, everyone? Four Oaks, Joey, what's up? All right. So hopefully everybody had some sales today. What's up, Diesel? I had uh, eight today, eight sales. Two were best offer. No, actually, a couple were best offer. Two have not paid. Two of the not paid best offers, I think, are about $125. So still waiting for that. A couple longer tail items that uh, I just took best offers, wanted again, wanted to move them, get product out. Pac-Man, what's up? Shane Scott. Uh, so got those moved out, waiting for the two sales. I actually already boxed up before the show tonight, which is a little different for me. Uh, so get everything boxed up. I'm just hoping these people that took best offers um, don't pay if, we, if I go to bed. So I did not go to the thrift store again today. Tomorrow's my last day of all these all-day meetings. So hopefully I will... Uh, We'll be able to get back to it. Maybe tomorrow I'll go. Maybe after work. We'll see. Um, let's see what do you have here? Who else popped in here? So get this flips. What's up? So get this at one. Shane had three. Diesel engine. Thanks for coming. Pac-Man had seven. Nice. Scott Lindsay had three. Yeah, I hate when people don't pay. They need to make it so best offer does immediate payment. I, I feel like that's a running trend. Best offer needs to have immediate payment, which is crazy. Glenn, what's going on? Charlotte, any sales today? Diesel, you're on the Scott Toner cartridge uh, train. Nice. Seven, seven for Red Nickerson. Red Nickerson's got a lot of things moving lately. But well, I won't complain. Scott had five today. Nice. I won't complain, though. Uh, not thrifting this week has kind of really forced me to go through all of my uh, stuff that I have not listed yet. Uh, I've had a stack of board games start piling up. So I was going to walk through that with you guys. Kind of show you what I do, what I look for. Glenn hit an estate sale today. Found a Cutco knife. I've heard Cutcos are great, even just the blocks. If you can find those. Oh, a Levi's jean jacket. Awesome. I heard those do well as well. Um, But yeah, getting that stuff listed, getting it up. I also want to hear about how you guys are doing. How your week's going so far? It's already Thursday, so getting that stuff up there. I was able to list about 10 things last night after uh, we got off the show, but got 10 things listed. Working on getting some more done today. Uh, so what I will do, Darren, what's up? Liquidation King, how's it going? Uh, so what I will do as I go through and list things, once I – here, I'll start with the first one here. So these are pretty much board games I'll walk through with you guys. Red Nexter, learned something the hard way. I will not be using auto decline on best offer again. Cost myself $15. Had an auto accept of 48 in an item and took off auto accept a few minutes later. Oh, man. Yeah, toner's hard to find cheap there, Mike. Still have more to list. Linda, nice. Uh, oh yeah, missing best offers that are higher than the one you're reviewing. Uh, I've had that before. Books and DVDs and CDs are at the bins. Yeah, books. So if you're looking at getting that stuff for 10 cents and you can find stuff that are worth a couple of dollars uh, and you want to send them to, to clutter, you could. Scott, I need to get back into liquidation. Catherine, this is a um, Italiano. Some lady's jersey. Um, I don't know her name. It's Monta Mangabello. I have no idea. Can Cantanina? No idea. Woman's bike shirt. I hope it's a woman's bike shirt. Yes, it is. Uh, Joey had a sale return to me from the post office. The guy was notified four times, picked up package, PO sent it back. Fees, what's going on? All right, so usually what I do, and sold a toilet seat for $36. That's interesting. Uh, so, for example, I'll look this up, right? 
I'll pop in the game. I got this from the bin, so it's pretty much free. Uh, pop it in, search for it, click on solds on eBay, find one that has recently sold that looks good, title. I'll hit sell, uh, sold as. And so for board games, when I hit sell like this and it pops up pre-listed, I first go uh, make sure the title's all right. I go and I put it in my tours, toys category. And then um, I will always then type in, where is it, right here? I will type in the UPC code. Always I type it in, always when I can. Because I feel, I don't know about you guys, but when you're in the thrift store, you take your phone and you go scan it, nine times out of ten, you only get a couple listings that show up. Because only a couple people are typing in the UPC. So if someone's shopping at the store for something new and they're scanning the barcode, you want your listing to show up. So always put in your UPC. At least that's I've had better luck since I've started doing that. I would love to hear what you guys think. If you guys really think the UPC plays into it. But I've always done that now. Even with board games, toys, anything that has it. If it does not have a UPC, like used clothing, I will always select it does not apply. I will not leave it blank. I don't know if you can anymore. You used to be able to leave it blank, but uh, I always put does not apply if it's not there. So I will do that, and then I'll put all pieces included. So what I will do is Joey always uses UPC when he can. Nice. Uh, good idea because mine are slow movers. Got a rack of games. Definitely put the UPC in. So what I will do then next is on, as we talked about all games, they will have a contents list. And uh, if there's no contents list on the box. I've always seen them on the box. Go to boardgamegeek.com and check out the pieces. And what's nice, a lot of times uh, with these bins or at the bins, the games are brand new. Now, what's nice is I open this up. Uh, it's interesting. A lot of times you'll see things, people write things on the inside. Um, but this one looks to be in the package. Example, last night I had a board game, brand new. Everything was in it. It was missing the instructions. So what I did is I Googled the instructions, printed them out, included them in the game. So I said all pieces included. This one has the instructions, which is nice. Uh, so instructions are good. Then what's nice about these bins games is that these are the penalty chips. No one ever broke them off. So again, brand new pieces. Uh, these are ziplocked. It says 205 cards. I will not count these. Uh, if it's a, a game of just cards, I will count them. But I mean, 205 cards. So that should be there. And then the last piece, a lot of times the little pieces are missing. This one has the die, which is nice. So I probably will not include it in this. What I will then do most likely, is I find this to be beneficial. I keep a, and I actually got this from a liquidation lot. You can see the sticker. I got it from an office lot. So I keep a stack of rubber bands here. And what I will do, so this board game, or this game is complete. So everything's in it. Just because I don't want someone getting random Ziploc bags, which I think is kind of weird. I don't know about you guys. But... Adding UPC definitely helps. I think Google picks up on it more. That's true. I would definitely think that it helps your search engine results. So what I will do is I'll probably break these up into two, but I will. I basically, I like to rubber band things. I like to keep all my board games neat, especially if a buyer gets it and stuff's uh, flopping around in there. Uh, what I will also do is if it's really flopping around in there, I will put some uh, bubble wrap in the box just so everything stays, it's not getting thrown around. Missed out on a $70 Pokemon board game. Oh, man. There, there, there's the other set. So basically, this set is complete. My listing's done. UPC's on it. I saved the listing, added the price in it. In the condition, in the description, I put the same thing nine times out of ten. I will put all pieces included. I will take a picture of every piece, or then I will save the listing. I will open it on my phone, take a picture of everything, 
with the phone and I'll list it direct from the phone. So I can get things up within minutes uh, doing cell similar and then taking pictures on my phone. But really, if I can find that, uh, it's seven nine one. Anything else? That again was my Cirrus that started playing. Darren, thanks for the super chat. Thanks for the two bucks. No, I've not experienced that. Oh, do they do they up the prices so you wouldn't be worth buying? All right, yeah. So that one's listed. I will remove the price tag. A lot of the bin stuff has that on there. I set everything on the bo uh, floor behind me as I get it ready, and then I take pictures in the listing on the phone, list it right from there. That's how I find to get things listed pretty fast. Now, a lot of times at the bins, you'll see these seen it games. Now, keep in mind, seen it is pretty big. Uh, what I need to do, and I haven't done this yet, um, if you do regional boxes, I need to start writing down the width, the length and width of all the re regional boxes and the length, because just looking at this, I know it's large, but it might be good to have a little card that you keep with you if you're going to do board games. And if you bring a, a, a ruler with you or a measuring tape, um, you can be able to figure out pretty fast if your games will fit in a regional box. And that's where you're going to save some money. All right. So this one. Now, what's nice about this. So there's the directions. Well, all, all the times it has the boards. Now, I think this one. I'm missing some pieces right there. So let's flip it down a little bit. All right. So there's the pieces, right? Missing the piece. I think I'm missing a piece here. Um, now, again, this one's unopened. So these, those are unopened, which is awesome. Uh, the DVD's in here. And that's unopened. So this might be a game I want to part out. But this one I would not list at the moment. Everything's there besides that one piece right there. But instructions a lot of times too i actually just sold a pretty popular board game sheriff of nottingham i took a best offer for uh 19 and it was missing it's like three little bags i took a best offer but someone wanted it, it was missing pieces so people will still pick up board games if pieces are missing um uh, let's see Drop something. All right. So definitely, uh, Sharp Seller, have you ever come across Win, Lose, or Draw? Yes. Uh, I've sold Win, Lose, or Draw, the original version. I sold it. was like 1985. I sold it, I think, for 20 or $25. I currently have the Win, Lose, or Draw Junior. That's still sitting there. It's funny. You take things out of the bags. I put everything in bags or wrap them with plastic. They don't have the right size bags. Yeah, guys, I think as long as you take care of the inside of it, you you kind of keep everything together. You, someone doesn't get something, and it's all just clumped together. Um, I just think it looks better for you as a seller. Um, Diesel, not all eBay listings allow me to click on sell similar. I find the ones that are out of the country or the ones that have variations in listings. Those will not allow me to do sell similar. So I'll, I'll have to find a single listing of someone that just did a single item, and you could do sell similar on that one. But yeah, the, you'll see variation listings. You won't be able to sell similar. Yeah, gathering I drop some. Uh, all right. So this is taboo. Taboo is pretty good. The problem I find with taboo is the buzzer's missing, and the buzzer's missing on this one. I think I showed you this one a while back. This is probably going to sit around. I will try and pick up. See again. No one's going to want to get this if they win it with old used paper in it. Um, uh, and then all the papers all jacked up in there. So what I would do is if I did find the buzzer and the timer, buzzer, timer, um, what I will do is I'll make it look pretty in here. So now I know it could be on the lookout for that. Red Neckerson, what was the highest board game you have ever sold, new or used? I sold a, if you can find vintage war games, vintage war board games, uh, those sell pretty well. I think so. it was called Axis and Allies. 
I actually sold it as Merchant Fulfilled on Amazon. I sold it for, I'm going to tell you right now, Access, I'm going to pull up my spreadsheet. I sold it for uh, $68. It cost me $23 to ship. Uh, I paid $2 for it. It was a $40 profit. Not, you know, get rich, but $40 profit on a $2 board game, I'll take it. Little uh, lowly poly, bogs, poly bags work great for contents. Yes. As long as you get something to organize the pieces, that's great. So I picked these two up the bins, two of the exact same pieces. Now what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to mix and match and get a complete set. And I have a taboo sealed for over a month. Now hardly any views. Joey, uh, is it um, how much you have it up for? All right, so let's check this out. I got these both at the same time, both at the bins, both on the same trip. So I wish I could do this and show you what it looks like. All right, let me do it this way. $40 off to $2. That's right. All right, so here's the – again, it's nice. They have all contents. They're always there. Board game there. You have all your Cenit pieces here. Always keep in mind, Cenit has, usually has two die with them. I've sold one without the DVD by accident once, so always have the DVD. Um, these circular cards, and there you go. This one has everything in it. And here's the, uh, actually there's something down here. That looks like it's just a piece of plastic. All right, so there you go. It looks like it's never been used. It still has the buffer cardboard in here. So that is pretty much brand new. So there you go. You can see it has everything there, which is awesome. Some CNITs don't do well at all. Some do awesome. So definitely look up comps. Mm -hmm. I did not look up comps. I just grabbed these because they were pretty much free. I think everyone has spring fever and is not playing games. Glenn, sold a yearbook last night for 60 paid a dollar. Whoa. Not a get rich quick scheme, but if you save your money, eventually you can become wealthy. That is true. Great news was Warren Buffett Monopoly, new and sealed, paid 35, but sold for 130. Whoa, that's awesome. All right, so here's my other scene. It now let's see if this is the same. And what's going to be awesome is quantities. I could put up two quantities. All right, so there's the instructions, and then CDs right there. The circle discs are all over the place, which is okay. And it looks to be awesome. All right, so here's the piece. A lot of times these are all thrown in there. There's the other piece right there. So I have all four. So those are good. Lock those in. Got my circles. They're all together. Those in there. The last one die. Two. And guys, if you can find these loose in the bins, grab them. all these pieces. Find the scenes, loose cards. This. Um, actually, on one that Sheriff of Nottingham game, I fished the whole thing out of the whole bin because someone just thought it was cool to open the box and turn it upside down. So I fished the whole thing out. Now, granted, uh, it was probably. Put a little time and effort to get that together but it was free money so there's my cards all the cards are there so what i will do is this is oh there's some more down here that fell on the bottom so now i can list these as quantity of two um, which is great uh and i can't get this out card out uh All right, so there's the cards, quick reference cards. This is going to go in here. All right, good to go. So those are complete, which is awesome. So when you, I think when I find bins or games at the bins that are complete, that is pretty much free money. Just be careful if they're super heavy, you're going to eat your shorts. Show to sold a Henway. Look for yearbooks with famous people in it. I've heard that. That's good. Uh, I trade my dollar bills as if they're huh, capture as many hostages as possible, hold them as long as I can. All right, so there you go. Just sold it off Posh. Nice, Donna. Donna had a Posh sale. That's great. I, lo I love multiples. Bought 22 sets of giant knitting needles for a dollar. 
Yeah, I love sets, guys. If you can find multiples, Mike, uh, the crazy card, I saw he bought multiples of uh, sunglasses, sunglass covers. All right, so last game right here. I'll show you guys another uh, Seinfeld seen it. I've sold one of these in the tin, and uh, this one's in the box. So we'll see. And this one's kind of box is kind of beat up. And there you go, the instructions. Now it's nice when you see these promo things in the, in the game because nine times out of ten, if you find the promo materials, usually it's pretty well cared for, or it's never been opened. So here's a promo card. You know, mail it in, register your game. If you open up the game at the bins and you see that, that's mostly a, nine times out of ten a winner. And this one's a winner. This one is unopened. You can see that right there. Uh, it still has the tape around the cards, has both die right there, and all the pieces. So this one should do pretty well. And being at Seinfeld, everyone wants to buy Seinfeld usually. Um, but the only issue is the box looks like it's been a little worn. But kind of see it. It's not the greatest, but definitely we'll pull it out. So those games from the bins were good pickups. We'll see. They might sit. But a lot of times board games will pay off if you let them sit there for a little bit. But, yeah, so that's really how I do board games. Uh, if the pieces are pretty straightforward, again, I just make sure they're in the box. If I don't know, I'll go to that website or I'll check the back of the box. Linda, did you see my Alabama? Chris, did you see my Alabama tote? Yes, I did. That's pretty cool. Any suggestions? Because I know you sell a lot of college stuff. I would at least start high. Um, I'm just guessing without looking comps. It was pretty cool. It looked in good, great condition. Um, I don't know what everyone else thinks if they saw that Alabama tote in the Facebook group. Uh, I would probably start maybe 59, 49. Uh, so, uh, start at high, which you're comfortable with, with the best offer on it. That's the way I usually do my high stuff. You guys saw my Dale uh, NASCAR Dale Jr. leather coat. I started at $2.99 with best offer. I uh, let it sit. It might sit for a while, but someone, some diehard fan will come over and look at it. Highest you'll pay for games, depending on the game, probably $4.99 is probably hit my max. Just because uh, you're looking at your shipping is going to be eaten, and depending on what the comp for the game is. Now, if it's a high-priced game, I'll pay $4.99 for it. Majority of the games, it has to be around two dollars. And a lot of times for a two dollar game, I'm buying them for parts most of the time. See, Michigan girl, thanks for coming. But highest I'll pay without looking it up is probably two dollars. With looking it up, I'll probably look at the profit and the weight of it at that point. <laughs> but again, weight plays a factor and size plays a factor. But yeah, so. Rule average is probably four bucks, four to five bucks. But two dollars all day, bins, I'll pick up any game. Any game is bins is is free game. So all right, guys. Hopefully that helped. Hopefully you see the board games as I go through them and what I look for. Uh sell them, not sell them, hold them, buy pieces. Uh sounds like everyone had a good week. Everyone had a good a lot of good buys, so that's great. Uh if you like the uh, video, hit the thumbs up. Talk to you guys in the chat, in the group. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.